Okay, my idea of this video is to try and show you how you can resolve a circular reference with a user-defined function and have it not be an incredible, painful, horrible, horrible process where you make mistakes and get frustrated and angry and all this stuff. Now, the advantage of, of a user-defined function, and this is, I, this is a follow-up to the last video where I went through a copy-and-paste function. Now, this is already finished because, to be frank, <laughs> it wasn't so easy. But I'm trying really, really hard. So this is a, a, a relatively complex problem that has IDC and uh, taxes in it and sculpting. And, you know, if we put a, here's the IRR, equity uh, IRR. And, and I'm just reviewing right now. Right now I'm reviewing why we'd want to do it. And here's the target. So let's say we want a target of uh, 8%. We're, we're, we're okay with 8%, which is pretty good these days. And we take the difference and we make a data and what-if analysis and a goal-seek. And we take that difference and make it zero, uh, equal to zero by changing the, uh, the, uh, this is the capacity charge, we have it. This is the advantage of the user-defined function. And of course, you can also do a nice little scenario analysis with a data table that you couldn't do otherwise. Because when we change the capacity charge, the cash flow changed. And when the cash flow changed, the the taxes, uh, uh, the the sculpting changed, and when the sculpting changed, the the DSC, the, the the debt changed, and when the debt changed, our good old IDC changed. So how to do this and solve this without a circular reference in in a kind of easy way? Now. Some of my friends said, oh, no, 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 we can't do it like that. We can't do it like that. The auditors might complain. Well, if the auditors can complain, you can show the different fixed and difference here. And this time the fixed comes from this function over here. And the function has a couple of different outputs. And that means, and a few different inputs. And it's a long function in terms of the number of inputs, but I don't feel so bad about it because it's it it's kind of got this is the debt size and this is the IDC and this is the uh, debt periods and I think this is the cost of the project. This is cost uh, without IDC. Those are the outputs. You can choose multiple outputs. Okay? So, how do we, how do, we do this? Let me uh, uh, outline the video. So, here's the, uh, what we'll cover, what I'll cover in the uh, uh, video. First, we're going to find where to uh, get a template function that is supposed to make this whole process so much easier. And then we'll explain how this thing works a little bit so that you can use it. And then I'm going to use the function in a very, very simple way. Okay. And then I happen to have finished this function because when I tried to do it myself, I have to admit, it was a little more difficult than I thought at first. It always seems to be more difficult. It's getting easier. I want this to be easier for you. And then how to... So the first thing is the equation for sculpting and taxes, but then we've got to incorporate the IDC, and finally, we've got to put it all together. This hopefully was discussed in the, or I discussed this, in uh, the immediately uh, preceding video. Okay, so first, 
Now, I don't have this uh, on the website yet, so it's kind of silly for me to show it to you, but uh, in the circular reference uh, discussion, uh, I kind of have a little discussion on how to uh, uh, have some of the principles of user-defined functions, and then I have this thing called Right Now Read Array. But this is, I've modified the name. And you go to Project Finance Models, and then you go to Resolving Circular Reference. Perhaps the easiest way for me to find this one is to put the date in, and it's Circular Reference Loop Template. Because the problem with, for me, a lot of these Circular Reference things is when there's a loop. Okay, And when there's a loop, here's what happens. You have to go around, and in this case, I want to go around for these, uh, perhaps just these three three columns. Now, um, I hope this doesn't mess it up, but I'm going to press alternate F8, and I've got a, and I'm going to click, I think the best way to do this is click on this function, this, uh, this workbook, and then get it. And then I'm going to copy it into our other uh, file, and I press alternate F8 once again, so this is just how we get this function. <sighs> I'll press edit, and what I'm going to do, how about this time, let's, let's make a new module, okay? Uh, you know, here's how I'll, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to uh, temporarily make a, if you ever, from the, from the, Generic macros have this stuff at the bottom. All you do is press Shift Control M to get the macro back. So we'll make a blank macro. We'll stop it. And this time I'll go to our uh, new macro, which because I just opened the file, this is in a new module. So what I do is just paste it, and then we we have our new function. Now this. Uh, since I've pasted it twice, I better put a, a different name on this. It, this output goes into multiple columns. And I said, don't, when you copy it, don't forget the option base one at the top. So I'm trying to go through some things that I make mistakes on. And then this thing called read array, we can, we can rename it. Now I'm going to call it simple. Uh, how about simple... Sculpting. Okay, and then when I uh, rename it, you have to absolutely sure be sure and rename it all the way on the bottom. Okay. Now let's pretend for a moment. Okay. <sighs> let's pretend that we, in our basic model, we have a DS, we have a EBITDA, and we've already made a very nice debt repayment switch. And we're going to take our uh, EBITDA here, and I'm going to take this EBITDA and divide it by the required DSCR over here. But I'm going to do this only over the uh, uh, repayment switch, okay, and then I'm going to get the total uh, debt service. Uh, without, without any discounting. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do is take this EBITDA in this row and I'm going to have to divide it by this DSCR, and I only want to do it over these periods. Now, here's the way I've tried to give you this function to make it easier. So I said, okay, well, I put a time switch here. I'm going to rename this. Hmm. Well, no, I'm not going to rename this time switch. I could rename this time switch. The repayment switch. I'm going to be lazy and not rename it. And then I'm also going to read in a DSCR. Okay? 
then what we uh, have here, what this does is it allows you to click on the entire uh, row. And the reason I think this is so important in user-defined functions is because, you know, if you start having to read in this one and read in this one and read in some total interest rates, it can really, really just, if you have to kind of press shift control, right arrow, and then F4 all the time, it's an easy place to make mistakes. So I try to make it so we can just read the whole thing, and that's the whole idea, really. That's the idea of this. So it goes around and it finds, it says, well, I'm not going to go to more 1,000 than 1,000 columns. I'm just going to read them in. And then I have a little bit of help with the iteration loop. But for now, let's not worry about that. Let's, and, and I tried to actually, I tried here to say, well, go around and around until you, the last value is the same as the first value. That's really just kind of a, a, a I don't know what to say. That's, that's just like an iteration loop. That's like, like a copy and paste thing. So right now, I'm reading in and getting the total EBITDA. I can get that. It's a meaningless kind of number. But I can also get the, 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 the target DSCR, debt service, sorry. Now, some people will say, ah, you know what you have to do is you have to put this option explicit at the top. And that means we would have had to define every variable. So maybe that's okay. But I'm kind of lazy. And maybe the laziness is a, a, a bad investment. Because this is an array variable. This is going to be in a whole one. And this is a scalar variable. This is only going to be one thing. So when we put our target debt service in, we put EBITDA in. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a mistake because I do this so often. E -B -E -B -I -T -D -A divided by DSCR. You might want to even put a little test to make sure the DSCR is not equal to zero, but I kind of know it's not going to be equal to zero. And then I can put, just like before, I'm going to put total uh, debt... Uh, uh, service, not target, equal total debt service plus target debt service. Now, when we really do this, we put a net present value formula in here, but the key thing I want to make sure you understand is when we initialize this variable, we should put a total debt debt service equal to zero before we go around the loop. The whole thing about this thing is really going around loops. So I purposely put an error here. Now, if I would have not put an error here, I did not explain the, the last thing I did here. But what we, what we could do is put a defined number. That's our going to be our total debt service. Now, the, we can then say, well, the last, we go around, and the last iteration we did is equal to the defined number. So a very first, the very first last iteration number is some really, really crazy, stupid, big number that we'll never be equal to. And you go around first, and so you say, well, the difference is the defined number, which is zero so far, minus the the last one, so we did, we're not zero. And then you go around and you say, well, let's put the, the, now let's redefine the last iteration to be the defined number. So right now the last iteration is, is, is equal to zero. You go around this and now the defined number is the total debt service. 
which is not the same as the last iteration number, but when we go around it again, we're going to compute the same thing twice, and then finally it'll, it'll, it'll just stop. Now when we're finished with this, we can then put the outputs in. And the reason I put multiple outputs, now when you put multiple outputs, I don't know if I explained this uh, somewhere else in, and in a nice kind of way, I should, but you see where it says as variant here. That means it's going to be an array function, and those are very, very helpful when you're doing the circular reference business. Okay, that's the first thing. And if it's going to be a variant, then you can put multiple uh, variables. Now, I just, by convent my own silly uh, convention, I put output 4. I just say we're going to output 4. Now, if it was uh, a 1, 4, it would, I think, go in a column. If it's 4, 1, it goes in a row. Uh, see, it's uh, down there. I said, if you want to call them, you put one comma four. Right now, it's going to be across a single, in a single row, across, across four columns. Okay, so we'll define this as, now we're going to get a value when I do this. I'll define this as total debt service, because it's such a common mistake I made. I forgot to put an array around the Evi dot. It's going to give us a value, okay? And then I can, over here, as the second thing, put total uh, EBITDA, which I hope that uh, I define here, total EBITDA. And for the fourth one, I don't know, we can put in just, how about EBITDA in the first... Uh, uh, for the very first uh, year. So you can pick anything out you want. Now, what I hope I did is show you that if you take this thing and then you apply it, it'll make the hopefully the, the, the process a little bit easier. Now, here's what we would do. We would select four outputs and put equal, and I put... <laughs> I can't remember. This is horrible really horrible. I can't remember what I called it. Now if I just go down a little, a little bit here, I guess I, can, I, guess I can, can't do that. Oh shoot. I named it Simple Sculpting. We go up to the top and it was Simple Sculpting. So we can select four different uh, columns in one row put equals simple sculpting and then I press shift F3 to get my little numbers shift F3 and then I click on the time switch which is the pre-COD switch I click on the EBITDA which we said was and I just did it wrong shoot this time switch was supposed to be the debt repayment switch, so perhaps I should have renamed that switch. Okay, and then I click on the EBITDA, and it doesn't really tell me that this is supposed to be an array, and then I click on the DSCR, which I said was going to be a scalar variable, meaning it's just a one-time variable, and then the other is an optional variable, I added some optional variables, and then I press OK. And uh, I did it wrong because I have to press Shift Control Enter. And it didn't work. Now I had actually expected it to give me a value. It should have given me a value. I'm a little bit upset that it didn't because the mistake I made here was my most common kind of mistake, not correctly differentiating between an array and a and, and what it must have done is some kind of, I don't know what it did, but I uh, uh, tried to add the whole thing together or something. And then, so let's now do this. And this is so embarrassing. Okay, just a minute. Okay, here was the really embarrassing part. And I, this is what I actually did. You know, 
I went, the, this whole iteration business was a mess. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> oh, shoot. So this time I just did it simply, and I think I'm going to save the file like this. Just say count equals 1, and then just do until count equals 10. So this is just a loop that goes around till count equals uh, 10. Okay. Uh, uh, and then uh, down here, I should have, instead of putting 1, put the start column, stupid as I am. And then we have total debt service, total debt an end column. This is what should happen. And it, as our first check, this divided by this should be the DSCR. And if we want to test whether this this whole kind of thing worked, we just put an equal sign, take the EBITDA divided by the debt service, multiply that by the debt repayment switch, and take the sum Okay, and we get 347.13. Where was my number? 347.13. So that was intended. And even though I, you know, I, I made kind of an embarrassing mistake, I think I'm going to leave it in there. Okay, I think it's, I, I'm really trying to show you the kind of mistakes that get made and I'm kind I'm trying to encourage you to try it a few times and not give up and then when you do this it's almost once you have these functions it's really as if you've done a copy and paste macro so if you're showing it to an auditor you can almost leave the copy and paste macro there and after you leave the copy and paste macro there, you can just say, well, you know, uh, look, Mr. Auditor, it would have given me the same answer with a copy and paste. I happen to do it better. If this was fixed, this would be the number. We'd get a difference. Okay, I didn't do it with fixed. I did it with a user-defined function, so I can do all of my optimization and all of my interesting analysis and all of my risk analysis and, more importantly, more of my structuring analysis in a far, 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 far more efficient way. So, now, once this was... The idea was here to show you the, the, the name of the functions. Now let's show you the kind of... <laughs> even more painful, perhaps, part of it. It's not really so painful. In the original notes on this first thing, I, oh, I took those out. I said, look, start at the end, and then work backwards uh, with some equations. that are in Excel. And then gradually add the inputs. That's really what we're going to do now. So I, I guess that what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm stuttering a little bit even here, but what if I wanted to really do the debt service, uh, uh, if I really wanted to do this calculation, which of course I do, if that was kind of a stupid thing to say. Okay, look at this. I have a tiny little difference. Perhaps it didn't iterate enough around. Maybe I should have made the count a little bit uh, uh, higher. Okay, and uh, what I would do is say, well, this NPV of debt service, I w this is what's causing the circular reference. So I want to get the debt amount as the NPV of the debt service. Now, what I would have had to do then is go into the, uh, we'll go into this section, and instead of doing this, I would have had to say, oh, no, 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 we have to first, down here, the, first of all, the target debt service is not the EBITDA, the target debt service is the CFADS. Now, I think it, it might almost be best 
uh, to do it like this. To try to avoid the, the pain. Okay? I'm not, I wish it wasn't so painful. And then we go over here and say EBITDA, uh, CFADS, is equal to EBITDA, uh, EBITDA, minus the taxes. That's our problem. Okay, and then um, we can then put the, the this equation in, and then so far so good. But when we make the total debt, we, we instead of total debt service, we'll put PV of debt service. And we put PV of debt service is equal to the PV of the debt service divided by some plus the target debt service divided by an interest rate index. And to get the interest rate index, we have to start it each period as one, and then what we do is we increment it. Okay. And I don't really want the big thing capitalized there. times one, 1 plus the interest rate. Now the interest rate changed over time. So we're going to have to read in the interest rate. And I'm going to put it as an array variable. And that means we have to go up and put it up here. We have to put, after the DSCR, we have to put in the interest rate. Okay, so that's, that's how it works. And that's going to be an array variable. Now, I would suggest putting the array variable before the, the other one. And now we have the defined number is the, the PV of the debt service. That's the uh, kind of our, uh, and I have to make absolutely sure that that's what I should have uh, put this up here. That's what we're going to make the output. And we have to make sure that every time we go around, we make sure that the PV of the debt service starts at zero. These are common things in a loop. These are very, very common things that you just have to remember. And it's a little bit painful. It's a little bit painful, but uh, let's... Uh, I'm not even going to show you that it works. I'm going to believe it works. Okay, now, after we do this, okay, let's go to the tools and macros and let's see the, the real one. So the real one, it started with the same thing. Whoops, oh no. Uh, okay, it's, I called it debt size. We read in EBITDA, and we needed to read in CapEx, I'll explain later, and we had to read in the depreciation because we need the base depreciation for the income tax variable, and then we also need the tax rate. So those are the variables we need. Now, once you go down and get those variables, then you can forget this part. Let's just look at all of the... Uh, 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 depreciation rate. Let's start with the depreciation rate. Well, that's the depreciation divided by the total cost. And then you can get the IDC depreciation that I'll talk about in a minute. Then we get the depreciation expense. And then we get our taxable income. Notice how we have to subtract interest expense from here. And then we can compute our taxes and get our CFADS as EBITDA minus taxes. And then we get our PV, and we get our PV factor, which I called the interest rate index in the last one. And then we get our PV of debt service for, for the current period, and then the debt size is just the accumulation of this. Now, there's an additional thing. I start with the debt sizing being, uh, I'm sorry, the debt balance being the debt size that we computed in the very last time. That is what causes the circular reference. 
And the interest expense is a function of this initial debt balance, which is our starting debt balance. But here's the real problem. As we pay off the debt, we figure out the repayment from our target debt service. Our repayment, it's a standard sculpting equation. Repayment is target debt service minus interest. And then the debt balance goes down. And as the debt balance goes down through your next increment, then the interest expense goes down. And this interest expense drives the taxes, and then you have the circular reference. And then you go all the way down and loop around and compute the debt balance over and over again, the debt size over and over again until it comes to one. Now, right now, I just use a count variable like I just showed you a, a minute ago. Okay? We're not finished, unfortunately. The, the reason we're really not finished here is because of this whole business of IDC depreciation. And we need how big the IDC is. Oh my gosh, but we don't know the IDC size. This one, we don't know how big this is until we've computed the debt size. So, once we've computed everything, then we have to ca call a second function. What a pain that is. That's what such an enormous pain. And that one, we use the construction switch rather than the debt repayment switch. So up here, do you see, I read in the repayment switch. Now, since I'm calling that function, I also have to read in the construction switch. And that's why I use the entire line to make it so much easier. If you really can do this, I'm, I, I give you a lot of credit. Okay, and then once we have that construction switch, we know also need the capex. And then we go through the same kind of process. And in this, in, this, uh, in this process, we go through the start column and the end column, but this is the construction period this time because over here I used to call it time switch. Now I call it construction switch up here. And when we did it in the first uh, 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 exercise, I called it the repayment switch. That's a little bit painful. Perhaps I'll come up with a more efficient way to do that, or you will, but uh, that's what I do. And then you go through and say, well, the IDC for the period, that's what I meant by ID, is the debt balance. This time we start with our debt balance of zero. And then we say, well, our funding needs are the CapEx plus the period. And then since this is an equity first problem, this equity comes before the debt, we put a minimum function of the funding needs and the remaining equity, and then the remaining equity goes down. I had this wrong at first. And then the debt draws that we need are the equity funding minus the equity draws, and the debt balance goes up, not down. This time it goes up from zero by the debt draws, and we get the total IDC and accumulate it. Now we need the total IDC because the total project cost is the total cost plus the IDC, and then the equity commitment from the total project cost is the project cost minus the debt size. And then we, I had a, a, a stupid kind of, see, I made a mistake. And then we re get the equity commitment. And then we go back to the equity commitment and we say the remaining equity is the equity commitment. And then we go around and around again. All right. And uh, I think that's it. And I suggest when you do this, you go through step by step. Do the easy part first. See if you can get the basic thing working. Do it without IDC first. That's what I did. Then put the IDC equation in. So this IDC up here, you could kind of put first IDC equals zero, a size equals zero. Or you could even just leave it out of the whole... Uh, uh, tax depreciation equation and make sure the whole thing works in an easy way and just gradually add harder and harder things. And now, after you've done this, you could add debt fees, commitment fees, you could add net operating losses, all of these things. I've done that a lot before, but I thought it was necessary or, or not necessary, nothing is necessary, especially since I give this for free. That's ridiculous to say it's necessary. But it's 
helpful, perhaps, to really see how the kind of complicated part of this works. And then once you got the you have the base in there, you can keep adding and adding and adding and starting to get it better. Okay, okay now I'm finishing off this video. I had a little bit of a pause there, actually. It was a long pause. But when I tried to explain this iterative process, if we really wanted to do it well, or precisely, we'd put the both the last debt size and the difference to be equal to some random kind of big number, not zero. And then you go around until the debt difference is equal to zero. Now the difference is equal to the debt size minus the prior debt size, but the prior debt size you do afterwards, you compute afterwards. Okay? And uh, they both have to be some big number because you want, if the uh, difference initially was zero, well then it just goes to zero immediately. That's kind of what happened at the very beginning of this video. Now, to really do this well, I think you should do what I, I probably did last time in the last one, make sure that the absolute value is bigger than some really small number because especially if you, you know, these should be, if you get really technical, uh, they should be uh, dimensioned as double because you get some really minor differences unless you do that. So I'm going to even do that up here. I'm going to put the uh, do until the absolute value of the difference in the debt size is less than some really sp small number. Okay, and then, uh, again, so we start with some defining some big number, and then we be very careful. The difference is the debt size you computed from the last iteration in the very first one at zero minus the last debt size, which is 99999 in the first iteration. So then the last debt size is, is zero this time. And then you go through the thing, and the debt size is not going to be zero. Okay, and so the last debt size was zero. This one is not debt zero. You have a difference. And then you go through it again, and the difference is still equal to zero. And then you go through the IDC one, and the IDC one has its own loop in it. And then it all works. And that's enough of that. And I'm going to somehow put a version of this that I'm allowed to kind of put up there on the... Uh, uh, website, and it's going to be in the circular uh, reference section. Okay, sounds so. That's uh, that's that.